Well, hello there. Welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books. I forgot to say my name. Hello, guys. I'm Monica, and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today, I have a really, really special video for me to film, which is how to get through really long books. And this video is really special for me to film because the following user requested it. Now, I'm going to be completely straight up honest with you really big books terrify me like terrify me really bad it's the only reason i haven't read anna karenina it's because big books are scary and and they're not scary i don't know it's it, it, i don't i don't buy into this whole like big book equal boring thing it's just that big books are just scary because of the time commitment it takes it's like I'm, I'm always gonna say going to the gym because i hate going to the gym guys i hate working out so <laughs> that is the only analogy I've got for you, okay? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it's like going to the gym, it's commitment, it, or like watching, you know, the extended versions of the Lord of the Rings all in one go, where it sounds like a good idea in the beginning, but about hour 10, you're like, who am I? Where, where am I? Did I go to work today? So here are my tips to get through all of that and read that big book you so want to read. All right. My number one tip, which I've mentioned a bajillion times on this channel, is go for the audiobook. You would be surprised how much easier it is for you to get into a really long book if it's in audiobook format. The first thing that I find with audiobooks is that they usually tell you the time that the audiobook is. So let's say you're reading It by Stephen King, which is right around 24 hours. So I think to myself, I read at 2x um, is speed on, on audiobooks or 3x depending on the narration. So if I divide 24 <laughs> by 2, I'm going to do it by 2 because if I do it by 3, we all know what's going to happen. I have no idea how much that is, but 24 divided by 2 is 12. So I just have to commit 12 hours of my life to this. And if I commit just one hour a day, I'm done with this book in two weeks. And that's like, that's so good. Two weeks for a thousand page book? You, you got this, you can do it. You go you. <laughs> I'm really pumped up today. So audiobooks, a great way to get through um, really long books. The other tip that I have is instead of buying them in the physical format, which let me get one book for you. This is the third book of a Spanish series called Memorias de Dune, and it's called Panteón. It's very famous. It's kind of like the Harry Potter of Spain. Look at that. Look at that. Like it, it's already heavy on my arms. And the idea that I'm going to do this and be at page 150, actually, and look over here and hold this thing, that's going to psychologically do something to you. Like it's going to make you feel like no matter how much you read, you're just not advancing. So instead of this, you've got this. You have the same exact book in here, but you just don't see the monumental thing in your hand, which is ridiculously scary. So if you have access to audiobooks or an e-reader, it doesn't have to be a Kindle, it can be any e-reader that you use, Go for those two. I don't know what that was. <laughs> All right, my next tip has a lot to do with my uh, other video that I made where I told you about my multiple, um, what are those called, bookmarks? My multiple bookmark whole spiel thing that I do where I divide books into smaller sections so I could get through them. Do the same thing with a bigger book. Now I have here The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Now this book doesn't look that big, but it's actually, let me check, I am never prepared. It's actually over 600 pages. It's 630 pages, which is pretty hefty. We're not talking a thousand pages, but it serves the purpose. Now, um, let's see if this will focus. Focus. Okay, there you go. So as you already know, all of these little tabs are 150 pages for me because that's what I usually tend to read in one day. But I actually re recommend that you divide big books, for example, The Monster, that is, there goes my phone. Why does it always fall? I recommend that you divide the big monsters like this in 100 pages. And you can read 100 pages. 
trust me, you can read 100 pages. Maybe not in one day, but in two days. And that means that you would read this 1,000, is it 1,000 something? Oh no, this one's 942. That means that if you divide this in 100 pages, that would take you nine days. And if you divide it in 50 pages, because maybe one day you don't want to read 100 pages in the weekend, you got stuff to do. That still means that you can get through this easily in two weeks. And that takes a lot of pressure off of you. So just divide up your books. That's like the number one tip I have for anyone trying to read anything trying to get back into reading, trying to read long books, trying to get through a book they're not so interested in, or whatever it is, trying to get through books for school, divide that shit up in sections where you can actually read them. And that is going to make you feel really accomplished when you get to a section. And when you get to a section, you can actually do something like watch YouTube or you can, I don't know, eat a treat. I don't recommend eating lots of treats for big books because then, you know, you're gonna get a sugar rush and then you're gonna get a sugar crash. It's just not gonna be good for you, honey boo boo. So, um, <laughs> give yourself a, maybe get yourself some saltines or something. That way you don't get the sugar crash. <laughs> All right? So yes, divide your book into smaller sections. It's gonna give you easier goals to reach and it's gonna make you feel better when you actually do reach them. All right, next tip, take breaks. Take breaks between the book. So maybe you've read 500 pages and you know what? You're kind of a little bit over it. You're kind of a bit bored. You're, you're craving something different. Well, then pay attention to that and grab a shorter book. Grab a book that's like less than 200 pages and read that and then go back to the other book. Now, I know that some people think that like if they stop and they like go back to it or if they read a book in between they're gonna like forget the characters let me tell you that you're smarter than you think you are and that, that that's not gonna happen take breaks from the story it's like for example when i'm watching a tv show that i really enjoy i can't think of one that lasts one hour right now oh the crown okay i adore the crown i am I am the crown trash, I am the crown found girl. But the episodes sometimes get a little bit intense and I need something to break them up so I will watch Nailed It, which by the way is the most incredible show on Netflix, just saying, just, I'm just gonna throw that out there. I'm not sponsored by Netflix, I wish. But anyway, <laughs> um, just break it up, just you know, so that you, when you come back to it, you're like, oh yeah, I remember these characters, I remember this, and maybe you don't remember everything that happened, that's also okay, it's okay to forget stuff, it's okay to like skim a little bit, it's fine, just take a break, take a breather. This is not a competitive sport, we've been through this, you can do it, you can get through this big book, and it's not, it doesn't matter if it takes you two weeks, it doesn't matter if it takes you a month, it doesn't matter if it takes you a year, whatever, the point is, you can get through it, especially if you take breaks. Like with everything, sometimes we need a break. So that's my tip. Along with taking breaks, which they go hand in hand, is my tip number five. Remember you don't have to finish this book in one month. You don't have a time limit to finish this book. I know that with like TBRs and stuff, the idea is like, this is my March TBR, where I'm gonna read this 1,000 page book along with 10 other books and it's like, uh, this is just kind of like an idea for you to figure out what you want to read. This is not a competition. I keep saying that, but this is not a competition. You don't have to finish this book in one month. You don't. You can take as long as you want. Don't put that pressure on yourself and be like, oh, well, I didn't finish this book and then you feel like a failure. No. No. Reading long books is hard. You know, especially today where we have a world of immediate and instant gratification. Long books don't give you that shit. Long books give you long-term gratification sometimes, unless you read books that you don't like, which we'll get to that one. But remember, you don't have a time frame to finish them. You can finish them whenever it is that you finish them. And that doesn't mean that you failed in any way, shape, or form. You finish the book. So what if it took you five months? Whatever. Oh, but so-and-so read it in 24 hours. Well, girl, you're not so-and-so. So, 
get with it. You are you and you have your own reading schedule and your reading schedule is perfect for you. Unless you have to read it for class, then you do have a deadline. In that case, go watch the movie or read the Wikipedia article if you have a time frame and you can't do it. No shame. There's no shame in that. Mm -mm. Not from me, BB. I'm with you. And I'm a teacher, so I get it. Am I like horrendously pale throughout this whole video? Probably. Okay. So what if you do want to finish this book in one month? What if you are like, fuck it, Monica. I want to finish this book in one month. I don't care what you say. Okay. First of all, don't get aggressive. But second of all, make sure that you don't set yourself unrealistic expectations with your TBR if you want to finish this book in one month. That being said, if you want to read this 900 page book and you also want to read this 600 page book and Anna Karenina along with five other books, look, unless you are somebody that reads really fast, that is just not a thing. <laughs> Well, at least it's not a thing for me. Maybe it's a thing for you, but it's just not going to be a thing for me. So, give yourself one book to read that month. Give yourself the monster to read that month. And get get it done. You can get it done. Like, I know that big books sound so intimidating when you say it's 1,200 pages. But if you read 100 pages per day, that is 12 days. If you read 50 pages per day, that is 24 days. You got 24 days in one month. You can do this. You can finish that book in one month, okay? Just just make sure you don't add like another five books to your TBR because then, you know, that's gonna be a bit more difficult and you're gonna have to do a lot more reading. <laughs> I hope this video is making sense. I really do. <laughs> Tip number seven. Remember, long books are really different than shorter books. What I mean by different is long books are going to be a slow burn. You're going to start reading things where you're like, when is the action starting? When is this going to, you know, pick up? Well, if it's a thousand pages, it's probably not going to pick up in page 100. That's not always the case though. That's not always the case. Maybe it does pick up in page 100, but sometimes you're going to start to see development in page around 400 which is what you would normally read in a like a regular size book per se. So what that means is be patient because this is a new reading experience for you. It's like if you're reading a really short book and then and you're used to reading like average size, you know, 400 500 page books and you read a book that that is 170 pages and your thought is, "Oh, but everything happened so fast, I didn't get enough character development." because you're reading a different kind of story. Long books are a different kind of story. So keep that in mind when you're on page 200 and you still have no idea what's going on. Because let me tell you, the author is probably not gonna tell you at that point either. All right, tip number eight seems really kind of, I don't know, obvious maybe, but maybe not to some people. If you're trying to get through a big book, set aside, Set, uh, I can't speak. Set, <laughs> set aside time every day to read. Set aside one hour. And maybe you want to divide that into 30 minutes and 30 minutes. That really helps also. Just divide your time. Just divide everything. Just, just I'm the queen of division here. But set yourself some time every day to read. This big books are marathons. So what we do is we have to go slow and steady, all right? So instead of sprinting through it, unless you are a sprinter, which I am not, we've established this, set, a, set yourself some time to read every day and that way this monumental business of reading this book becomes less monumental. I, I don't know how many times I'm going to say that. I am so sorry. Make a drinking game out of it or not, I don't want you to get alcohol poisoning. Drink some water, then you'll be hydrated. I just did the weird uncle thing. I, I actually do that a lot in real life. <laughs> Tip number nine, go easy on yourself. Starting big books is hard. It's like starting a novel. It literally is starting a novel, but what I meant was, it's like starting to write a novel. 
It's not easy. It's difficult. It's scary. Going through page one is horrible, especially when it starts with a preface with they do the uh, Roman numerals and then suddenly you've read 25 pages and you're in page one. I fucking hate that, man. Go easy on yourself. Remember, you're reading for fun. Remember you want to get to know this story. Remember you want to know these characters. Remember that this is a fun experience. And that in the beginning, you are, you know, Bilbo getting out of his house for the first time even though, even though he doesn't want to. But, wasn't the journey worth it? So yeah, go easy on yourself and accept the fact that you're terrified. Because big books terrify me too. In fact, I'm just honestly not a big book reader because they scare me a lot. But I'm trying to follow my own advice. And finally, tip number 10. Remember you don't have to finish this book. I don't care if this book is a classic and that that's why you're reading it. I don't care if this is the most popular book on YouTube. I don't care if you're not enjoying the experience of reading this big book and if you don't enjoy the experience at all of reading big books, then don't because nobody's forcing you to unless it's your college professor. Then just read the Wikipedia article. I'm serious, just read it. Like, <laughs> if you can't get through this book, then read the Wikipedia article for class. The reality is when it comes to fun, when it comes to enjoyment, big books are not for everyone. Think about video games, think about movies, think about how, for example, first person shooters are not everybody's cup of tea when it comes to video games. And just because you don't play a first person shooter doesn't make you a non-gamer. And just because you don't watch horror movies, it doesn't make you a cinema enthusiast. It doesn't matter. Maybe big books are not your thing. And that's totally fine. It doesn't matter. And I promise you that taking that pressure off of yourself might actually make you read these books a lot faster. Or might make you realize that this is just not your thing. And honestly, who the fuck cares? All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and those are my 10 tips for reading big books and one tip for letting go, like Elsa from Frozen. Did I tell you guys I have a Frozen tattoo? I think I have. It's right there it's with me and my sister. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some of these hints helpful. Let me know down below if you did. Let me know if you have some tips about how to get through big books or, you know, how to uh, let go and not get through big books or whatever it is you want to say. Um, your comments really mean a lot to me. So thank you so much for leaving them. And well, just remember, I post videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And sometimes if I'm feeling a little saucy, I'll post a video on Tuesdays or Thursdays. But never Friday and Saturday, because your girl needs to rest, all right? <laughs> so that's it from me today, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. I'm getting better at that bye, guys thing. Totally. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm, I'm like pumped today. I'm like having a good day, which is really, really something that I'm glad for because I had a really tough week, let me tell you. So I'm really happy today. So yeah, I do, oh, I am the most awkward person in real life and on the internet. I don't know why I said real life. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later, guys. <laughs> Bye.